first game we're going to play is a game called the support game. The idea of the game is that we're going to have a three on three. You can play up to four on four, five on five, six on six. But the coach throws the puck in, the, in a de designated area. In this particular scenario, we're going to play in the neutral zone. The objective is the players on each team have to touch the puck at least once and then get the puck back to the coach. The focus of the game is to get the players off the puck to support the puck, to get the defenders to play man on man and to really possess the puck so that each player and each team touches it once and then gets the puck back to the coach. That's how you score your goal or get your point to win the game. Make sure each guy touches it once. Make sure each guy touches it once. Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. One nothing blue, one nothing blue. For our next game, we're gonna play a one-on-one -on -one possession game that turns into a two-on-one. -on -one. The idea behind this game is we're gonna play in a corner of the offensive zone. We're gonna dump a puck in the corner. One team's gonna have the advantage to get the puck first. The objective is the player that gets first touch in possession is on offense, controls the puck for about five seconds. I, as the coach, will send in a second player on that team. They'll now have the odd man advantage, a two-on-one, and the idea is to work the puck out of the corner to the front of the net for a scoring opportunity. Now I'm gonna throw a puck in one corner or the other. If I throw it in this corner, White's on offense. You're on defense. The offensive player, your job is to control the puck, possess it, protect it for about three or four seconds. If you do a good job, I'm gonna send the second guy in. But you gotta control it. Because if the defender gets it and he gets it to me, it's over. Okay? But you have an advantage. You go into the corner under control, you can hit, you can check, but it's got to be controlled smart checking, okay? Once the second guy comes in, you got to talk to him, let him know you're coming. Your job is to work the puck to the front of the net now. Work out of the corner, two on one, odd man advantage and score. Once the two on one happens, what's your job? Stay in the middle. Take away the good scoring opportunities. You battle that until I say stop. When I say stop, I want all three guys to sprint out of the zone, okay? You understand? And I want the next goalie jumping in, getting ready to go. Go, go, talk to him, talk to him. Help him, support him, support him. Get that puck back, boy, get that puck back. Got your two on one. Get back in there, get back in there. Talk to him, talk to him. This next game we're gonna play is called In the Box. I'm gonna draw on the ice in front of the net a SWAT area, a box, okay? I'm gonna use a Sharpie marker that'll come off the ice when the Zamboni comes out to redo the ice after practice. I'll put two players from each color in the box. I, as the coach, will feed the pucks to one designated team that's on offense. The objective is to get the offensive players to learn how to separate from the defender, get open for the pass, and get the puck going to the net. Defensively, the concept to work on is man-on-man -man defense, but having balance between the guy I'm covering and the puck, so I do not turn my back to the puck, either offensively or defensively, a bad habit a lot of our young players have today. So we're working on defensive and offensive concepts in a tight spot. Separation, it's making space for yourself, creating time and space with either your size, your reach, your speed, your head. Puck goes outside the box, new puck. Last puck, last puck. Come on, get open, get open, White. Come on, get open, get open. Now there's a progression off this drill. We're going to go two on one, give the advantage to the offensive group and see if they can get themselves open. I can also build a bigger box and go two on two, three on three, even four on four to make the space a little bit tighter. Go, let's go. Rebound, rebound. Oh, White scores it for him. Let's go, move. Ah. Someone's got it. You guys are right next to each other. New puck, new puck. Oh, finish that, son. Last one, last puck, last puck, last puck. Oh! We're going to play a game called one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, three-on-three. The idea of the game is three guys are going to be on offense, three guys are going to be on defense. It's all about man-on-man -man defense, and it's about support offensively. Okay? It's something you guys got to get a lot better at on both areas. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a net here. Okay? We've got the face-off dots here. I'm going to put an X here with a puck, say blue. I'm going to put a white player here at the hash mark. I'm going to put another blue here with a puck. I'm going to put a white there in the hash mark. And out here at the blue line, 
I'm going to put a blue player with a puck and a white, white player next to him. On the first whistle, the first whistle, this guy steps up, this guy takes a good angle, and it's one versus one. The rest of the guys are not in a drill. And I want you to stay on this half of the ice. This guy's trying to walk to the front of the net or come around the backside of the net for a score, okay? As soon as the whistle blows, the second whistle, forget about the first puck. If the defender gets the puck, shoot it out of the zone. Just shoot it out of the zone, okay? On the second whistle, this guy steps out. These two guys are still in it, and now this guy's in. What do we have down low? Now we're working on a two-on-two -two below the face-off circles. Working on low defensive play, offensive play, okay? So now we got to work on support, and just like you just did there, separation, finding time and space, creating time and space, okay? How do you create time and space? With your head, your hands, or your feet. If you can do all three, then you're going to be playing in the NHL. Okay? Second whistle, you're playing that puck. Defenseman get it, shoot it out. Okay? Third whistle. This X out here at the blue line. He waits until the goalie's looking at him. He shoots. What are the two guys, the four guys down low doing? The two offensive players are trying to get good position offensively and screen and tip in rebounds. The two defenders are trying to box out. The shot takes place. He follows his shot. This guy's in. What do we have in the zone now? Three on three. If there's a goal or the puck gets shot out, I as the coach might throw a puck in right away, play it. If I say keep playing, if I yell change, I want everybody to get out. Next time we got O's in the three offensive spots, or uh, blue in the three offensive spots, whites on the defensive spots. You understand? Let's get after it, boys. Wait till he's looking, wait till he's looking. Play it, play it, play it, play it. Now nah, get it out, get it out. Oh, shoot that, son. So now we're working on one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three. Two, three on three. Great for the goaltenders. Great for defensive concepts and offensive concepts. Man-on-man, -man, support, play off the puck. Obviously scoring chances and all kinds of stuff. Great job, let's get white on offense. The next game we'll play is a neutral zone transition game. How it's set up is we bring the nets up between the top of the circles and the blue line, and we make the neutral zone a main part of our game. I'll send three players out from each team. I'll throw a puck in the middle. The objective is for one of the teams to get possession. Once they get possession, they'll dump the puck back to two defensemen that are back behind their net. They will then have to come back, regroup, and attack the other end. The team that loses possession will have to change. Three new players will come out. That will allow the, the, the breakout to happen without pressure. That will continue on for a while. And if the same group gets continual uh, possession and regroups, I will stop it, get them out of the drill, and change it. The two guys playing defense will play defense for two regroups, and then we'll get them out of there and get them into the rest of the game. With the number of players that you have at practice, it all depends on the number of kids. What I'm going to allow them to do is as many regroups as they can or they need to in order to make the, the drill happen instead of having them change. We don't have enough kids out here right now to have the change take place, so I'm going to allow it to happen. So what I have the group that loses possession do is they have to come back over their own blue line before the, they can go back and forecheck. It just allows the regroup to happen without pressure. That completes the video portion of this segment. Now let's move on to either your test or additional resources to reinforce and support what we've been talking about.